hello. <laughs> How are you? There you are. I was just having tea and a pea. Do you need a pea? Mmm, lovely peas. Well, uh, lots to talk about today. Did you like these, by the way? Sometimes when I my head's cold, I think I'm going to have hair today. And I do this. Mmm. What do you think, inquirers? Does it suit me? I'm not sure. I don't know if it's my colour. Let's have a look. How about this one? <laughs> I think that's more like it, don't you? Yes, maybe. Maybe if I took this behind the tie, we could pretend. Oh, what about that? <laughs> that's not worked. No, that's not happening at all. Anyway, uh, shall we start? I think we should start. Shall we start? Pom-poms away, everybody. Where do I put the pom-poms? Down here. Don't need this, do we? No, we don't need this. We don't need that. Or this. Or the other. The stool. Here we go with the stool. It's heavier every week, this stool. I don't know what's going on. Ah, how are you today, Basil? You're still looking radiant after your hair, because I must say, all fluffy and uh, wonderful. Uh, little, oh yes, you've been watered as well. The elves have been very good to you this week, haven't they? My goodness, what luxuriant foliage. Well, you can wait over there, Basil. The clock, the clock, this isn't a clock. Oh, this is, this is the miraculous potato-powered potato phone. Potato phone. So uh, we'll use that in a moment when I tune in to hear your voice as you bellow at me. Tell me everything. Uh, we don't need that. Tea. Uh, I'll eat the rest of my peas later. Should we put them there? No. Um, let's start. Now, how we always start, of course, is looking at your homework. <sighs> let's dive into the board and see what we can find. Oh, hello. It's looking a bit dusty in here. Look, look at that. Shark dust! Oh, I must get my duster out. My dusty duster out and get dusting. Do you like to dust, inquirers? It's a great thing. You should always try a good dust next time you're bored. And let's do some dusting. Very carefully around the ornaments, of course. What wonderful homework I had. So you recall, hopefully, last week we looked at space, didn't we? What's up there? Well, the ceiling's up there. Beyond that, uh, the upstairs to the laboratory. Beyond that, the roof. Beyond that, the sky. And after that, space, the stars, space stations, satellites, rocks, great, wonderful things. And somewhere, aliens. Might they look like this? That's what Ethan has drawn for us this week. Look at that. Fantastic little alien. He's in front of his home planet there. And look, what's this? My finger nearly covering it. Whoosh! Shooting star. Wow. So thank you very much, Ethan, for that. Another splendid effort there. We love it. Thank you very much. Very good here at the uh, laboratory today. What else have we got? The usual suspects have given us homework. A quick fold, because I only like to show one piece of art at a time. It's good that you're, you're able to have a look at um, each other's art one at a time and give each artist the respect that they deserve for their piece of work. That, my lovelies, is from Elsa. You can tell because she's written her name very neatly underneath it. And Elsa has drawn one of the most unusual aliens I have ever seen in my life. Look at it. I don't know where, what to make of it. And that's, of course, what you want from a good alien, isn't it? So you can see there, hopefully, this little crest. Isn't there a little crest on top? I don't know. Maybe that's that's the alien's head? Or it could be a crest or it could be a hair. I, we don't know, do we? It could be anything. Oh, and here's the body where it look, looks like a wing, maybe, or an arm. There's some little feet or tentacles or things. I don't know. It could be a tail. We just don't know, do we? And look, two, two eyes and a smiley face. So at least we know it's a friendly alien. Thank you, Elsa. That's tremendous. 
And here we have from Caleb, his alien. Look at that. At first I thought that's a fierce looking alien, but he's actually, he looks quite friendly to me. What I do notice is how thin his legs are. Now, I'm not one to judge. My legs aren't particularly thin, it has to be said. But uh, with such thin legs, I think he must come from a planet that's got very low gravity. So he can spring around a lot and his body doesn't weigh a lot. So you could tell a, quite a lot about that alien. And look, he's got these bobbly things on top of his head. A bit like the pom-poms I had. My goodness me. What's next? Let us see. Eloisa, thank you so much for that. That's tremendous. Look at that. There's a big eye in the middle. And there's a big mouth. And then hands and legs. He looks kind of casual there, jaunty. I'm an alien and I'm ready to have fun. And look at these, again, little bobbly things on top of the head there. What are they? We don't know, do we? We don't know what they could be. Anything. They could be to look through, hear with. They could pick up radio waves. We don't know. Magical. So thank you for that. And now be careful. The next, this next alien looks a little bit like he's got, he's going to come and, come and say hello. <laughs> this is uh, uh, from G Dad. Again, a tremendous uh, piece of work here. Eyes on stalks. Ooh, big, big, shiny nose. Happy smile. Oh, thank goodness. That's a big, happy smile. Look how many arms he's got. Four arms and two legs that are a bit like arms. So maybe this alien floats. Maybe he's in water. We don't know, do we? What I do know, he'd be a very good goalkeeper. All those arms. Or a tennis player. Or a ping pong player. In fact, any game that you need lots of arms for, magic. Uh, and finally, we have our own submission from the team, the elves here at the laboratory. They like to engage. And this is from Eli, young master Eli, hand-drawn, beautiful alien. Look at this wonderful creation. Three eyes on stalks. That's handy, isn't it? Because you've got two eyes for looking in front where you're going, one eye looking behind you to make sure no one's about to go boo behind you. He's got two arms, he's got two legs, and look at that really bright colour there. Also got a mouth, and interestingly, a nose underneath the mouth. That's good. So when you dribble, you could smell, smell food that's come out and your soup can go. Anyway, let's not worry too much about the position of the nose and mouth for aliens. Put that in the box marked, things not to worry about. Mm. So what do we want to do today? We, TV! <sighs> do we like TV? Do we? Inquirers, we're going to learn all about television. We're going to learn about the mysterious box in the corner of the room that makes the moving pictures. We're going to learn all about those. But first, I need to make sure that you're still awake. Oh, it's important to be awake at uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm going to plug in. I'm going to switch on the magical potato phone with a kick. And I want us to start by shouting very loudly, very loudly. So I need you to shout very loudly, very loudly, what kind of things do you like to watch on television? Pe Peppa Pig? Peppa Pig? Pe Hold on a minute, I need, to, I need to rub this off, clearly. Peppa Pig. Oh, that sounds fascinating. Peppa, 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 Pig, 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 Pig. Marvellous. What else do you like? Peter Rabbit. Oh, I like Peter Rabbit. I do like Peter Rabbit, you know. Uh, Peter, my name's P Peter, Dr. Pete, short for Peter Rabbit. Not Rabbit, but uh, there we go. Peter Rabbit. He's a little bit naughty, isn't he? Likes to steal vegetables. He'd be eating basil. Good, what else? Transformers! Oh, I like Transformers. Transformers are terrific fun, aren't they? But you've always got to worry, haven't you? Uh, you're driving along and all of a sudden, well, I'm not driving, I'm flying in a robot. How does that work? It'd be very confusing, I think, for everybody. Uh, but Transformers, great fun. Your little bot. Have you got a pony? Oh, yeah, I see. Yes, my little pony. 
with lots of lots of beautiful bright hair to brush like this. Brush, brush. <laughs> Fantastic. What else do we like to Octo Noughts? Octo. Octo Noughts. That's a great word, isn't it? That's a great word. They teach you. Basil, you're in the way. I do apologize. Octonauts learning all about going around the world, finding out about everything and animals and places. Very exciting viewing. I do like a good dose of octonauts in the morning. Uh, what else have we got? Willoughbys. Do you know, I honestly have never heard of or seen the Willoughbys, uh, but it sounds jolly good. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe we should have a look at it here at the laboratory. Laboratory, prepare for the Willoughbys. This evening, we will dine on the Willoughbys on television. Maybe. Okay, good. Well, thank you for that. I'm going to uh, switch you off now because you are a little bit noisy and chattersome uh, and distractible Asians. Oh, goodness. So all these wonderful things we like to see on the television, maybe on the computer screen. And all of these are like what you're watching now. Lots of uh, exciting things that keep happening as you watch them. Now, long ago, there wasn't a television. <gasps> what did we do, I hear you ask? What did we do? I'll show you what we used to do. This is a book I like to read. Inside the book, there are pages, and you can read the pages and look at the pictures. And, oh, as you turn the pages, the story happens, and you can imagine everything whooshing around. Oh, it's very exciting. So people used to read books. Other things people used to do, this is a pack of cards. People used to play games with the pack of cards, and they divide the cards up. Oh, 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 oh goodness, that, that's it. No, no, that's not supposed to happen. Let's just, um, let's pretend that didn't happen, and just gently... So, uh, cards, a good game of cards, uh, always a good way to, uh, to, 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 to have fun in the evening with your friends and family. Yeah. What else did people do? They told stories. They danced. They sang. They played musical instruments. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> and sometimes when they wanted to learn about a story, they'd watch people pretending to be things, actors. They'd look at the theatre. So long ago, before the television, everything happened as you were there, as you saw it, live. So something happened in front of you and you watched it. Whereas now, of course, everything, most of the things we see anyway, have happened a long time ago and they've been uh, played to us. Uh, this, of course, is happening right now. You can watch it right now or you can watch it later. I don't mind which. So how on earth does this magical thing happen? Well, it's all to do with our eyes. We've talked about eyes, haven't we? We did eyes when we looked at the senses. And our eyes are very clever things. They take in everything that's happening and they pass it to our brain and we go, oh, I can see that. And then they do it again. Oh, I can see that. Oh, I can see that. And it's always happening. So if we show the brain a little picture, here's a little picture. Here's a little human person, dun, 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 with a, a football. So if we look at that and then very, very quickly after that, we look at the same thing, but with the ball over here. <laughs> then we still see that picture. And then we see this picture. They kind of blur one into the other. And it looks like the football has moved and the little leg has gone up to kick it as well. So that idea uh, is, is really how television works, is that it shows you a picture and then it shows you the next picture. And the next, and the next, and the next. But it does it very, 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 very fast. And your brain can't keep up and thinks, oh, it's not lots and lots of pictures. It's just, it's everything's just happening. I can watch it happen. And that's the magic of television. So uh, what, I, what I would like to do today is we're going to do a, a very uh, interesting experiment. We're going to try and see if we can make this happen just using things we find around the house or in my case, around the laboratory. Now, I wish I could show you the laboratory in all its finery, but we always ever see this little corner of it. You don't see the huge machinery, the equipment, the bubbling flasks, the great big rocket engines ready to blast the laboratory off into space, and the strange and unusual creatures that live underneath the floor. But you don't need to worry about any of that, do you? No, inquirers, not at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm <coughs> feeling a bit thirsty. 
So I'm going to make some tea. Um, and the tea I'm going to make today, I'm going to move the book because I, I like my books. They're very precious to me. And I don't want to get them wet. That might, uh, that might mean I can't read them and enjoy them as much. Peas. So I'm going to get my tea. Now, I like to, to think about what kind of tea you'd like to watch me make. And obviously, only things that you can eat and that are safe uh, to be put into a tea, but also things that might be quite unusual. And sometimes I theme them so they all relate to what I'm telling you. And I'm telling you about television. Now, the other place you might go and see moving pictures is the cinema. And when I'm at the cinema, sometimes I like to have things to eat while I watch a film. Do you? Do you? Tell me what kind of things you like. Shout good and loud. What kind of things you like to eat at the cinema? Popcorn! Well, that's handy you say that. So, uh, obviously, for my tea, I was going to put popcorn in it, but the, the larder here at the laboratory doesn't have any popcorn. So I thought, sweet corn. I think sweet corn is fairly similar, isn't it? It's both corn. It's just sweet. Popcorn sweet. I think that'll do, don't you? What else? Hot, hot dogs was exactly what I was hoping you'd say. Hot dogs. Now, we don't have any hot dogs either. Uh -uh. So I thought, well, why don't we use some ham? That's kind of like a hot dog, isn't it? So we'll have a little bit of that, definitely. I also like toffees. None of you said toffees, but I heard sweeties being mumble around there. Mumble, mumble, mumble. Now, hold on a moment. So um, toffee. We don't have any toffee here. I know. Head Elf has just done some baking, by the way. Some gingerbread. I was thinking I might sneak off and take one and eat it. <laughs> no, mustn't do that. That would be dreadful. They're not decorated yet. Uh, but toffee. Uh, we don't have toffee. So I thought, coffee. Coffee rhymes with toffee. So maybe it'll work. Who knows? Uh, let's have a look and see. So uh, here we go with the tea. I'm going to make myself a lovely cup of popcorn. Sweet corn. So one piece. One piece. You don't want to go in my tea, do you? You're safe. Don't mind me. Um, hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hmm. Ham, 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 ham. <laughs> Toffees. Coffee. A bit of coffee, just a little bit. We don't want to put it all in. Uh, I think a little stir, don't you, is in order. Get that ham and that coffee and sweet corn all nicely mashed up there. I'm always a little bit nervous, inquirers, when I start uh, making these teas. They sound like a good idea, but generally they look awful. Um, you know what I like on a hot dog? Mustard. So let's have a little bit of must. Not too much. This is jolly hot mustard. This is um, just even putting your tongue on it hurts. Look. Why did I do that? Oh, let's stir it in quickly and hope that uh, it, it goes well. So what we've got in here, inquirers. Sweet corn. Ham. Coffee. And mustard. Who thinks this is going to be delicious? Nobody. Good. Where's the cup? There's the cup. Look at this genius little bit of laboratory action. Out it comes. What colour is that? It's not a good colour, is it? Nothing about that is nice. Let's try it, shall we? I say we. I wish you were here to try it, inquirers, and you could tell me not to have it. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Elf. 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 They're not listening. Here we go. Oh, that's really bad. I think we'll put that over there. A long way over there. I'll pretend that never happened. So what have we learned so far, inquirers? Do not try to make a cup of tea with ham, sweet corn, mustard, 
and coffee. I think a lesson has been learned there for all of us. Basil, please lend me a leaf. Just a little leaf. I need to chew a little bit of basil. A little bit of basil makes everything delicious. Wow, basil, you're a very intense flavour today. It's amazing. Thank you very much for that. Okay. So we've seen then, hopefully, that television is uh, one, uh, thank you, one picture after the other, very, 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 very fast. So we need to think, how? How do these things manage to make it into our home? So let's have a look at what makes a television work. So the first thing we need is a camera. So here's the camera. Hey, big camera. Got a lens thing here. And it'll watch somebody. What should we have them do this time? What? I don't know. What do you think? Should we have them kicking a football? Riding a pony. Ah, oh, that's a great idea. So here they are. The problem, of course, inquirers, is I can't draw horses at all. Uh, it's more like a llama. But remember, any time you draw an animal, you can make it into a horse by doing that. Magic. So uh, here's a horse. dum de dum ears. Beautiful horse. Uh, we're sitting on our horse. Right, so filming uh, the camera. So what the camera does is it takes a picture. So all of the light that crashes into the uh, the horse and the, the person here all goes steaming into this camera here, and it goes onto this, uh, well, for a real camera, it used to go onto this big grid, okay? So all of the light uh, goes to the right different place. And then that camera then goes to a thing called a transmitter. Now, I don't know really uh, what transmitters look like, but I think that looks pretty cool. That's how I build a transmitter. And that transmitter takes all the information about that picture and it sends it out into the air, all around us, boom, right now. We've got all of these amazing signals. Now, as well as that, what we can do is we can send that same information along cables underneath the ground. They can come into our houses and bring that. So lots of different ways in which all of that information comes into our house. Now, the clever bit, well, there's lots of clever bits, but I think the really clever bit is how you make a picture and how you change a picture into things, electricity that can go along the wire. So let's imagine a little picture, okay? And on this little picture here, we are going to have a picture of a, what should we have? What should we have? A pencil. Here's a picture of a pencil. Okay. Now, if we divide that picture up into all these little squares, we can see that if we want to make a picture of a pencil, we need to have a bit of pencil here and in this square and this one and this one and this one. And no pencil in any of these. So all we need to do is pick one of those and tell us whether there's pencil in it or no pencil in it. And it's that information that goes along all of the wires and cables and things. It's very, very clever. So uh, this is how our, our picture is made into, into this electrical signal that comes through into our television. So the final thing, the first is the camera filming things and then poof, the transmitter going all over the place and then coming into the laboratory or the house or wherever you are or your little computers. I don't know how you watch uh, television things nowadays. How do we get that picture back out? That's really clever as well, isn't it? So what most things have now is something called, and I'm going to teach you some big words here now, uh, an LCD. That's not a big word, but it stands for some liquid. That's what the L stands for. Crystal. Now, those are the important bits, okay? It's a liquid crystal. So the liquid crystal screens have got these strange things in them. So here's our television set. And what we have is some little lights, okay? So we've got a red light, we've got a blue light, and we've got a green light. So if you take the front off a television, do not take the front off your television. Don't even touch it. But if you did, behind it you would see these tiny little lights, red, green, and blue. And then another set, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. And in front of those are these liquid crystal things. 
Now, they're very, 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 very cool things, liquid crystals. And what happens is if you put some electricity into them, it means that you can't see through them. And if you take electricity away, you can see through them. Those kind of things. So we can switch on and off the little red and blue and green lights all the way across the television set. And that means that then we can switch on the little bits of light here and none of these and a bit more here, none of those, a bit more here, 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 and a pointy bit at the end and make our pencil. So when the signal comes into our television, it makes all of the right lights come on, all of the right color lights come on. And then just after it, it makes the next picture using all of the liquid crystals to switch the right colored lights on and off. It's very, very complicated, but very, very clever. And I think you should always know how things work that you use a lot. So you should know, I think, how a television works. That's quite important. Now, it's very important that uh, these images arrive really, really quickly. So you need at least 15 of those per second so that you can manage to, to not see things as a series of individual pictures, uh, but this long flow of a film or something. How good is that? I think that's pretty good. So uh, what we're going to do now then is a little experiment. I'll just have a little drink first, if I may, just to wet my whistle. Mm. Oh, that's really, really bad. How could I forget how dreadful that tastes? It's incredible how dreadful that tastes. So I'm going to make, I'm going to show you how to make something called a thaumatrope. Wow! Now, a thaumatrope, people think they found them from cave people days. Ooh, 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 ooh. We're sitting around a cave making moving pictures. Mm, a thaumatrope. So I don't think uh, our, our primitive ancestors called it this, but this is a thauma. It's a great, great name. Thaumatrope or thaumotrope. I don't really know. It's got the word rope at the end, though, and I always like that. I think that's a good uh, good way to end the word. Good. Thaumatrope. Now, how a thaumatrope works is quite simple. Here's one I made earlier. This is a piece of cardboard. Can you see it's a piece of cardboard? I've cut it into a circular shape, and on it I've drawn a cake. I like a bit of cake. I've punched two little holes in very carefully. I used a skewer. If you're going to use a skewer to do this, or indeed scissors to cut out the cardboard, make sure you find a grown-up. If you can't find a grown-up, ask a monkey. They're very, very helpful. So uh, I have then put some pieces of string through the holes, and I've tied them into a loop. A loop, you see? Hmm, good. And I've done the same on the other side. And on the other side of the cardboard... If I turn it over, I've drawn a cup of tea, something else I usually like. So a cup of tea on one side and a cake on the other. And if you'll notice, the cup of tea is upside down on one side and the cake is the right way up on the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you those two pictures very, very fast. OK, and hopefully instead of seeing two pictures, a cup of tea and a cake, you'll see both at the same time. Wow! Okay, I think that's quite exciting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind this string up so that it gets all tangled. I'm going to put a finger in here. And, oops, I'm going to put a finger in here. There's a cup of tea. So what I'm going to do is spin this. Whenever I spin things, I like to whistle. Tangled up the string has got now. Okay, what I'm going to do now, watch very carefully, inquirers. I'm going to let go of this disc and pull my fingers out to the side. And hopefully you'll see this spin round and round so fast that it looks like the cup of tea and the cake are next to each other. To do that, I'm going to need lots of room. I should have got my safety equipment out, shouldn't I? Away you go, miraculous potato foam. Basil, stand aside, my friend. Technology is upon us. Are we ready? 
Are we steady? Did you see it? Did you see it? I saw it. It was upside down to me, but I, for you, I think it was the right way up. Did you see that? Ficker, 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 ficker. Now, people used to make these. They had a bird on one side and a cage on the other. And how do you get the bird in the cage? Boom, in it went. Now, you can imagine, today, that's not a very exciting film to watch. What would we call it? Tea and cake. Come and watch tea and cake. Oh, I'd love to. I've not seen that yet. What's it about? It's about a cup of tea and a piece of cake. Fantastic. I would watch that, actually. Uh, but imagine the sequel. Tea and cake two. What happens in that? Well, this time there's a, a, a bit of cake and a cup of tea. So it, it may not be the most exciting. But imagine if you had never seen television. If you had never seen anything other than a drawing, perhaps. You imagine if somebody came up to you and made that. Oh. It would be amazing. And that's really what life was like before television. So let's move on because television is upon us. Now, I have some uh, interesting news and some, some sad news. We'll start with the sad news. So this is uh, next week is going to be the last of our intriguing lecture series for inquiring minds. We've come to the end. I think you're all off back to school after next week. So we're going to stop doing the intriguing lectures for Inquiring Minds. But I did wonder whether I should come back and do a Christmas special next time when we're, we're all off on our Christmas holidays, our little holidays at the end of the year. Maybe we could have another intriguing lecture series, two or three, for the Inquiring Minds as we're on our Christmas break. Mm, I've got an itchy nose thinking about it. So uh, hopefully that will be uh, excitement uh, to look forward to. But for now, I've saved the best till last. Now, this might sound a little unusual. But next week, we are going to be learning about <laughs> potatoes. Oh, yes, we are. But uh, you think potatoes? Uh, it's dreadfully tedious. They're really not. Potatoes are incredibly exciting. The way they grow, what we make out of them, crisps. Chips, baked potatoes, boiled potatoes, mashed potatoes, all these things we can do with potatoes and so much more. I am going to show you real potato power. You will not believe what a potato can do. OK, so don't go thinking it's not worth tuning in for because it's going to be a belter. OK, that means good, obviously. So, uh, all that remains for me to do today is to give you your homework. So, for homework this week, I want you to imagine. And what I'd like you to imagine is this. Here's your piece of paper. I want you to imagine that your piece of paper is a television. And you get to choose what goes on that television. Okay? So, for example... I might think, I would like to make a program about horses eating apples. And we'll see which type of apples they like best. We'd call it uh, Dapple Apple Off. So here's uh, uh, how it would work. Here's our table full of apples. Oh, I can hear the elves calling. Um, and here's our horse. Now remember, if you can't draw a horse, draw, draw something with four legs and this mane that always works for me. So here we've got our horse eating apples. And that's my television programme. And a name if you can. And think of a really interesting television. And I'll show people and uh, we'll find out who would like to watch your particular television programme. I hope that'll be exciting. I can't wait to see what you uh, come up with. But for now, dear inquirers, I'm just checking we've done everything we needed to do. I think we might have done everything we needed to do. Uh, do, in, if you want, make your own former trope. Oh, they're always fun, aren't they? Uh, but for now, I'm going to go and read a book, nibble some basil and make some nice tea. I might even sneak into the kitchen and get one of the head elves gingerbread biscuits. Shh. Till next week, inquirers. Ah, keep inquiring. Farewell. Farewell. Farewell.